Hello and welcome. In this video series, we are doing a large scale backtest and optimization on over 500 stocks. So the idea is to backtest S&P 500 stocks on an optimized trading strategy and rank the stocks based on the overall return of the strategy. So what will be the structure of the series? In this part, we are taking care of getting the data, doing the right data manipulations, and we are also running the first essential backtest. So in a nutshell, we are setting up the fundament. In the second part, we are splitting the data set, run the optimization on a share of the data set, and then check if this optimization would yield positive results on unseen data. We are also taking a closer look at the results overall. I'm keeping the strategy very simple, but this is of course customizable with your trading strategy. So I'm buying when the short term moving average is above the long term moving average and I sell vice versa. Important disclaimer, concepts shown in this video are not an investment advice, video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Alright, let's get started. We just need two libraries, Y Finance to pull stock price data and Pandas for data handling slash data manipulations. Next, I'm going to read in a Wikipedia page containing all current symbols in the S&P 500. I'm going to index for the first table on that side and then access the symbol column. With that, I'm getting a series containing all current symbols in the S&P 500. Side note, if you are concerned about survivorship bias, I will link a video how you can amend this list to diminish it or even get rid of it. For now, I'm going to transform that series to a list. And what I'm doing in the next step is simply passing that list to the download function from Y Finance. So I'm going to create a price data frame, use YF download, pass the tickers list, and then I'm starting my analysis in the beginning of 2010. You can pick whatever starting date you want here. As you see, this will take some seconds. Download completed, three failed downloads. I'm ignoring that for now. So let's take a look at what we are getting. So you see a price data frame. This has a very interesting structure. We have a first level in the columns, which is adjusted close, open, high, low, close volume. And we have a second level containing the ticker symbols, right? So how would this look like when we check the columns? You see multi-index and we have adjusted close, A, adjusted close, A, and so on, right? So what we need to do is set up a function which is slicing this data frame for a given symbol for us. So I'm going to do that step by step because I think it's an interesting thing to know. So first of all, you need to get the level values of the second level. That is this one here. So you would take get level values one and you would get those uh, symbols here, right? Now, if I'm screening for a certain symbol, let's let's just take Apple. I would just get a Boolean array, right? With a true value for all those containing Apple. So I could use that Boolean array to filter my columns. So I would just get the multi-index and then adjust the close, close, high, low, open volume only for Apple, right? And then I simply can index my price data frame for that. And as you see, now I'm only getting the relevant columns for Apple, right? So I still have the second level here. So I will drop that within the function. But this is how the logic of the multi-index and extracting one data frame for one stock using this logic. So let's set up the function. I'm just going to call that slice df for a given symbol. Then I'm creating a copy of the price data frame. I'm just doing that. So this is optional. Optional. I'm just doing that to avoid some pandas warnings related to chained assignments. You can also suppress warnings, but this is the more convenient option. So I have my slice data frame. And now I'm just doing what I just showed you. So sliced equals two, then this one here. And I have to change some stuff here. So sliced 
sliced, sliced. And then of course make it flexible here. So this is the path symbol to the function. Now I have my data frame like this and now I'm just dropping the second level. So I'm getting rid of the uh, symbol which is unnecessary information. So I'm just using sliced columns equals sliced columns drop level and then the second level. So with that I'm simply getting rid of this. And then very important, I have to create a column which is containing the next day's open. Why? Because I cannot buy on the close. I can only buy on the next day's open whenever I'm getting a buying or selling signal, right? I can only buy on the next day. So this is avoiding uh, forward looking bias here. So I'm just creating a column here. So locking for all rows, then create a price column. And that is simply the shifted open value. So how would this look like? So if I'm taking this value here, I would get the next open value in this row, right? So I'm sh simply shifting that column one row back, but I'm going to show you when this is done. That is easier to understand, I think. So return slice in the end. So if I'm calling this function for, let's take Apple, you will see that I have my price data for Apple starting in 2010 going until the uh, last trading day. And you see I have a price column here now, which is simply the shifted open. So this and this value is the same. This and this value is the same. So I have the next days open in the same row as a potential a buying or selling signal. Okay, so important function, uh, breaking up or not breaking up, it's the wrong word, but slicing this data frame into sub data frames containing only the price data for the symbols. Okay, very important function. Next, I'm going to set up my moving average calculation, just calling that moving average calculation. This is taking a certain data frame, then a short term window and a long term window. So N and M. And then this is simply adding columns to those data frames. So I'm taking SMA one, which is the short term, This is simply rolling over the close column with the provided window and then takes the mean. And the same logic for the long term, simple moving average just calling that SMA2, rolling window M, and then mean. That's it. So if I would call that on, let's take Apple here, and let's assign that to test. If I'm calling that on test, of course, provide the windows here. So 50 and 100, 50 for the short term, 100 for the long term. My test data frame would have a new column SMA1 and SMA2. All right. Okay. And now I want to set up the backtest. And how does the backtest work? I'm using an iterative approach here. I'm simply looping over all rows in this data frame and then check if my SMA1 value is above my SMA2 value. Keep track of if I'm in a position or not with a simple position flag, which is a Boolean value, true or false. And then um, if I have my SMA1 larger than my SMA2, I'm going to buy on the next day's open. So I'm just taking my price column here as the value. So if that is larger than this one, I'm buying for this price. And same for selling. If my SMA2 value is larger than my SMA1 value, I'm selling. So let's set up the backtest. Just calling that backtest is taking a data frame then a short term and a long term window. And then this is first of all, doing the SMA calculation on a provided data frame. Because as you might already know, I'm going to pass all sub data frames. So all data frames of the single components to this function here, right? So I'm going to do the moving average calculation to my provided data frame. Of course, also pass the provided windows 
And with that, I have my data frame, as you see here, for every sub data frame I will create. Now I'm going to use a position flag, as I mentioned, which is initially false as I'm not in a position. And then I'm keeping track of the profits of all trades because there will be multiple trades over the course of over 10 years. And then I'm looping, as I said. So I'm looping over every single row in this data frame. So for index row, in df iter rows, so whatever data frame I'm providing to this function. And then I'm checking if I'm not in a position, if not in position, which is initially the case, I'm going to check is my SMA. So if row SMA1 is larger than row SMA2, then I want to buy, right? And I'm just storing my buy price here by taking the price value. So the next day is open value, right? Why am I doing that? Because I'm simply taking that buy price, then take the sell price, subtract that buy price, set it into relation to my buy price and have my relative profit of the trade. Okay, so I'm also setting my position flag to true after I've bought. And then I'm checking if I'm in a position now and my selling condition is fulfilled. So simply that one vice versa. So I can just change this sign here. And now I'm calculating my profit of the trade. And as I have my buy price stored, I can just take profit equals to my current sell price. So the next days open minus my stored buy price and then set it into relation to my buy price. Simple as that. And then I'm going to append to my profits list. And I'm nearly done. I'm setting my position flag to false. So after this loop was going through every single row in that data frame, I want to calculate my overall profit. So I'm simply accumulating all the profits in that list. So I'm going to call that gain. Gain equals to, let's take the next row here. Gain equals to, so I'm taking the profit stored in the profits array and simply calculate the cumulative uh, profit. So I'm transforming that list to a series, add a one, and take the product. This is simply accumulating profits here. Uh, I will link a video where I explain that in detail, why you're taking the product and so on. So return gain. And with that, just to show you how this is working, if I'm taking uh, my test data frame, which is containing Apple and test that for a 50 day short term moving average and a 100 day long term moving average, I would get this return. So I would roughly nine X my capital here. So 787%, right? Optional, you can also subtract the one here, but I want to show it like this. So this would be the factor of your gain, right? So $1 would be $8.87. .8 okay, so this is how it's working for um, one data frame. And now I want to have it for all of my symbols, right? So I can just store the results in a list and then loop for symbol in tickers. And then I'm simply creating sub data frames. So I'm using my slice data frame function on a given symbol. And then I'm, I am having the data frame for the symbol here. So in the first iteration, that would be 3M, second AOS and so on. And then I have a data frame. Then I can call my backtest function on that data frame. So backtest on sub data frame. And then I have to decide for a certain uh, short term and long term moving average. Of course, in the next video, this is going to be more flexible in the optimization part. For now, I'm just calling that function, print it out to get some feedback here. But I'm also appending that to my results list here. 
And then I'm getting for every single symbol, I'm getting the results of that trading strategy, at least for the 50 day and 100 day uh, moving average. So results, depend, then backtest. So let's run that. And as you see, we're getting a lot of uh, profits here. So yeah, maybe to make this loop more meaningful, I could have added uh, results for results for, sorry, I messed that up. Results for symbol, really stopping that for now. So that looks more meaningful, right? Result for 3M, this one result for AOS and so on. After some seconds, this is through. So let's take a look at that by just creating a data frame out of the results. So I'm just going to call that profits, create a data frame, then give the column a name profit. And this is taking the list of results and the index should be the ticker. So with that, I have it nicely stored in a data frame. So you see 3M is yielding 48%, AOS yielding 268% and so on. And then I could do some uh, sorting here. So or just take a look at the 50 largest on the profit column. <laughs> and you see Nvidia is yielding 47X, right? of your capital, which is insane. But Nvidia, on the other hand, was also uh, rising extremely over the last decade, right? So if you want to check that, you could do something like that, slice CF on Nvidia, then take the close, take the percentage change, add a one, and have the product, so Nvidia, was even rising more than when you would follow this strategy, right? So this is how you would compare it. You can also plot that, of course, if you're a more visual person and don't mess the code up. So there you have the NVIDIA chart here. Let's check out some more stuff. Etsy quite surprised by that. What is the Etsy return? Ah, you see, that's quite interesting. So on Etsy, you have 16x and following the strategy, uh, the, the, just, just uh, take the buy and hold return, you have 3x. How does this look like? Sorry. Yeah, okay, makes sense. Anyhow, this is it for the first part. I think this is already very interesting. Next part is very exciting. So I'm really looking forward to that because in the next part, we are just taking a certain share of the data, run the optimization, and then check on the left part of the data if that strategy actually would give me results, right? And we are also doing some more optimization stuff like uh, passing flexible parameters here. So I'm looking forward to that. I hope you do as well. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos. Bye bye.